Dean, Episode 1. What are you doing here? The same thing my father is doing to me in the palace. Calm down, Jalaluddin. You're paying the price for the deep-rooted hatred Tarkhan has for your mother. I was a stranger in the Sultan's palace. Your grandmother kept this hatred of hers for me all these years, and all because I was not from her tribe. She even waited until today to take revenge on me. That's what she thinks she's done. It's foolishness. Why should the Sultan allow himself to become the tool of the hatred and tricks of women. Half the commanders of the Sultan's army came from Tarkhan's tribe. By making Oslach his crown prince, the Sultan buys their swords and also manages to keep his army safe from being slaughtered. The truth is, when a sword is bought with such shame, it does not leave its scabbard when it comes to war, and the Sultan will be left alone. What the Sultan has to do is win over hearts and not swords. The Sultan's heart is with you, Jalaluddin. Hmm. I swear to God I would have given up what's rightfully mine if my father had stripped me of it out of his own will, not because he fears his mother or her tribe. Look, I am afraid of Tarkin's hatred as well, even much more than your father is. Don't let Tarkin take you away from me, Jalaluddin. If you don't go to the palace, that will weaken Oslak's position as Crown Prince. Don't let them consider you as a silent claimant to the Sultan's throne. Go to the palace and pledge allegiance to your brother. Don't tear apart your relationship that you have with your father and break your mother's heart by not going. Ah! What a wonderful blessing. You have truly graced the palace by coming here today. You know, I almost lost my sight trying to find the Amir Bukhara in all that fat and bulge. I'm actually amazed that I could see you at all. <laughs> so tell me, what's going on in Bukhara's paradise? From Khorazm to Iraq, I'm quite sure that a single fruit doesn't fall off a tree in a garden. Nor does a sheep give birth to a calf without you knowing about all of it first, Nazareddin. So please don't ask me what you already know. Don't be so sarcastic, Emir. The Sultan has arms and legs and eyes and ears, you know. You see, you and the rest of the Emirs are the Sultan's arms and legs, and I'm his eyes and ears. Well, may God grant the Prime Minister a very long life. I thought that the eyes and ears of the Sultan his Prime Minister. <laughs> but you know, you really cannot expect much from those weak eyes and even weaker ears. The truth is, the Sultan has many of those eyes and ears, O oh, Mir Bukhara. I am one of the smallest among them, and of course, I am also a very naive person for wanting to express myself. Hmm. Tell me, do you know what I pray for night and day, Nazareddin? Good health for the Sultan and a long life for the Prime Minister, because in his absence, the Sultan will be surrounded by people who are just like you. People who are shadows, who walk and whisper in each other's ears, and have nothing else on their minds except for overcoming the wills of others in favor of yourselves and also your tribes. They would know this place inside and out. Today, 
Today, it has been about 150 years that the great Kharasim dynasty has been ruling over this land. The son of this dynasty rises from the Amu River to Sindh, and everything there is from the east to the west. Right now, there is absolutely no one in any corner of the world who truly does not know the name and also the prominence of Sultan Alai Idin Muhammad Khwarazm Shah. And that being said, we must be truly thankful and grateful for the magnificent king that God has blessed us with. Because all of the affairs of the world, and also religion, cannot be handled properly without a strong and dominant government. But for every coming, there is a going. Mankind is mortal, and all of us are simply just guests for a certain number of days in this house which is called the world. The world that we spend our entire lives in. What remains is he, the one and only great, almighty, all-powerful God. O oh, Amirs, nobles, and commanders, on this auspicious day, the Sultan, based on long-standing tradition and interests, and in the presence of you, who are the emirs of different parts of the land, the commanders of his armies and the men of great stature and position, the Sultan chose Gotadin Oslag as his successor for now, and he will be recognized as the new crown prince, and from this day forth, after the Sultan, he is to be known as the new leader. He will be king, and coins will be minted in his name. In the name of the almighty and all-powerful God, and on my command, I proclaim you now as the eighth Chorazm king. May you live a long life. Congratulations! Doesn't the Emir of Bogor intend on congratulating the new Crown Prince at this time? Where is Jalal Eddin right now? Wasn't he supposed to be the new Crown Prince instead of Ozlach? Or am I mistaken in thinking so? Now, if you're a man of politics, you know that suppositions mean absolutely nothing. When it comes to politics, that is. Long live the Sultan! Long live the Sultan! Long live the Sultan. that is given to you, of the Crown Prince. All of you should know, the heart and sword of Jalal Adin belongs to the Crown Prince. We are having a celebration today, and I, just like any other father, would like to see both of my children at this special gathering, standing next to each other. Your ceremony is entertaining enough. I'm not a man of celebrations, father. I detest parties and receptions.
Dostlar. Jalaluddin is a bit harsh. He knows war better than celebrations. Control yourself, son. You should honor your stature. It's Jalaluddin who has to respect my stature, father. Even if you do become sultan, Jalaluddin is still your elder brother. Have a good time on the occasion of this auspicious day. Like this, sir. Hmm. Yes, it is very nice indeed. Don't go too far there, Jalaluddin. Can I at least go see the birds, please? Imagination of mankind is driven with what he imagines something to be. The thought of a garden takes you to a garden if you really think it, and the thought of a shop takes you to a shop. But in these imaginations, what you don't see is the deception, which might be hidden in places you would never think of. What you don't see is the regret of having gone there. And that's when you say, I thought it was for the good, but it wasn't. Thank you. 
I'm a bird, a nightingale, a parrot. If they tell me to make a different sound, I cannot do that because this is my language. I cannot do what I cannot. This is the way that life works in this world. You tricked me big time, Mesa. You sold me an ill parrot. It only had strength to live for a few more minutes with me. You tricked me into buying an ailing bird. It might have just eaten what it shouldn't have eaten. But I didn't have anything with me at the time. It was in the cage when I got it from you, I remember clearly. I arrived home, opened the door, and it was lying in the cage like this. Unbelievable. The seller was holding the parrot's wings, looking at it like this, to see what happened to it. All of a sudden, it happened. The parrot came back to life. The dead parrot came back to life and flew away. So the dead parrot came back to life, you say? Yes, it flew away <laughs> and went into the sky, Mother. The poor seller is unlucky. What about the poor buyer who had paid for it? It was an intelligent parrot, son. <laughs> What is father laughing at? He must have found something humorous about your story. <laughs> hmm. So the parrot died. To be freed, you see. That's right. The parrot pretended to be dead and was then freed. It was singing and very much alive in captivity. But when it stopped being amusing, things had to change. It then decided to free itself. That means sometimes choosing to be silent is more effective than speaking aloud. It's without mishaps. Wisdom is like rain in the monsoon season. It is endless and rains down on all those who want it. But it pours down only as much as it is deemed necessary. There was a heavy weight on my shoulders, which I feel no more today. Tonight, surely there will be many closing their eyes to sleep peacefully. What happened was what they wanted and dreamt of for so many years. You're being way too bitter right now, Prime Minister. I vowed to the Almighty God and the Sultan to speak only in times when telling the truth. There are many flatterers in the palace. These are surely the last days of my life, Sultan. Let this very old man with a bitter tongue say what others won't say because they fear for their life, or they love their life too much, maybe. You have upset me quite a bit now, Prime Minister. What are you filling up the ears of the Sultan with now, Prime Minister? Communication with the elderly sometimes makes the heart weak. Old people who are nearing the end of their days, fearful of their death, tend to make others weak and timid as well. The Great Lady must know, better than I do, that there is a border between caution and fear. But you very well know that the line is quite thin. Instead of listening to this bitter old man, please listen to your cousin, who has at least brought you some news from afar from the city of Otra. Come closer, Khairka. Don't be a stranger. I really hope you have good news for me right now, my cousin. I've heard enough bitter words for the night and need a change of mood.
Your servant has no choice, because he has sworn to tell the truth, no matter what, be it sweet or even if it is bitter news. A group of Mongols? If the Sultan wishes so, I will gladly give you the news at a later time, if need be. Say it! Make me even more bitter! A group of Mongols, disguised as merchants, have entered into Otra for a few days. What they have for trade is quite little. It does not match their numbers at all. The goods that they had with them made me especially suspicious. I asked around and I realized that there are spies disguised as merchants who have come here to gather news about the land, secretly trying to find information that could hurt us, and not business. I am aware of the pact made between Sultan and Genghis, but is sending spies here disguised as merchants part of the pact? This is unacceptable to me as a loyal servant. I cannot let them do as they please any longer. I am a border guard of the truly great Khorazm Kingdom. I cannot stand by and watch the Mongols betray us. I won't allow it. And if these secret spies, who are now in Otra, leave the city, which is a border area, and enter the other parts of the land, what are we to do? I give you full permission to do whatever you like to them. Stop them now. Hurry now, go back to Otra tonight and tomorrow and finish them off. A rush to kill the Mongols, even if they are truly spies, might be a little Silent, too Silent, Prime hasty. Minister! Silent! You do as I said immediately. Hurry right now, Gaia Khan, and finish it off soon tomorrow in the best way possible. You can go. But your highness, please listen to me. That's enough out of you, Prime Minister. You turned the ceremony for the Crown Prince into a mourning procession with the things you said. That speech you gave was that how to introduce a new crown prince, or to pray for the death of the Sultan. Gold is beautiful, isn't it? Gold is always beautiful, it's really. It's as if the Mongol gold has a different shine to it. <laughs> it's a small gift for my great aunt over here. Five hundred Mongol merchants, and all your aunt gets from you is this one little chest as payment. You have become a little stingy, my nephew. If the Sultan say hadn't gone and ordered the killing of all those Mongols, what were you going to do with the five hundred corpses in Otra, eh? Hey? <laughs> I was just hoping that my great aunt would help me. <laughs> I have seen her do much more greater things than this in life. <laughs> I will forgive you this time, it seems. But from now on, don't you dare do things without receiving orders from me first. And also, don't take that old man's influence lightly, boy. Go back to Atra immediately. And before you think of what to do with the corpses, send your aunt her share before anything else, in full. Do you want to know why the Mongol gold has such a different shine to it? Because it is covered with blood. The blood of pure innocence. Coming. Coming. Is behind in Valadin? Yes.
Who was it, dear? Obeyed. <laughs> what horrible news does he have with him from which horrible part of the land this time? Whose death has he brought news of for us this time? He's such a curse, that one. <laughs> Don't stand here watching me. Don't let them waste the dough and the bread. They might just burn it. Halime. Halime. <laughs> Don't let the dough go to waste, Helena. No, my dear, don't worry. Don't worry, nothing will happen. The dough will be okay, I promise you that. <laughs> it's quite shocking. The number of the murdered merchants has actually surpassed 300. And for everything that I've heard, they say that Lady Target's nephew was behind the massacre. And some of the people have even been saying that it was an order from the Sultan because everyone knows that he has always had his eyes set on the land of China. In fact, he has used this as an excuse to drag Genghis toward Iranian soil. But you see, Genghis has made a vow on his Asa and Yasa, and so it seems that's the Mongol law, that he will definitely turn Iran into ruins. I truly hope that the danger can be avoided. <laughs> this turns out to be true, then may God help us with these imprudent sultans. God's light isn't like the light of the moon or the sun which leaves a trace. If his light shines without a cover, everything will disappear. There will be no sky, no earth, no sun, no moon, nothing. Everything will be gone completely. Aside from God, nothing will remain. No, he didn't need it. You know, ever since Obeid came and then left, Baha'i Din's mood has really changed a lot. I've told you a thousand times already that you shouldn't open the door for Obeid when he comes because he has nothing else to offer except some bad news. I hope you can forgive me. But you see, I'm only doing what I was told to do because the great scholar himself has told me to allow anyone who wants to see him in. Yes, that's correct. He said anyone, but he didn't say obeyed now, did he? Oh. Mother? Hmm? Should I go ahead and take it to him? Go eat this. I promise it's very delicious. I have eaten it too, but I suggest you don't eat this one. Let's eat together. Mm. 
I see you are still frowning. Why does grandmother consider Obed to be a bad omen? You see many of us consider the truth that we do not like to be a bad omen. Sometimes it's hard to trust certain things. In the nature of mankind, all of our knowledge is in fact deeply embedded. For his soul is able to see every single hidden flaw, just like the purest of water. It shows everything that is hidden underneath it. Whether it is stones, earthenware, or anything else. The Sultan should know that he is not a Sultan, but a tool of the Imperial Harem. The Sultan also knows these things in charge are the people who are living on this land and that they are the ones who also provide the Sultan with bread and water. So without the people, I don't think that he is even worthy of leading a pack of horses. The Sultan must know and realize that Iran does not belong to him. All that he does is take the taxes of the people, and then he goes to his bedchambers and retreats back to his hunting grounds. The way that he actually governs the land, it is done with a closed fist and very poorly. We have a god, and a prophet, and a Quran, which are in fact our criterion and our foundation for our political world. I've already heard your news. I want you to go back to Bach and continue doing what you were doing until the messenger of the Sultan brings along new orders for you. And do not let anyone get suspicious of you. Your wish is my command. <coughs> the court steward will take care of all your work while you're gone. <coughs> <coughs> Don't waste any time. Put everything in writing. Have you heard the news from Bach? You can go. Well, I have heard some things. You should know that I'm just like you. I have my own spies. <laughs> that is good. So I'm quite sure that you have heard that this time Baha'i Adin's sword has aimed more directly and sharper than it ever has before. As a matter of fact, he actually had some words for you, too. Yes, I know. I know that. Now tell me, are you planning on just hearing without doing anything about it? What exactly can I do? Do you want me to drown Bahaeddin or hold a ceremony? And then stab him to death in front of everyone? Don't be so sarcastic. And please don't act like I'm your enemy, Sultan Muhammad. Bahaeddin Falad isn't just a simple preacher you know. If you do not put an end to his voice right now, you will be hearing his words from thousands and thousands of other people. I don't think that you know Bahadin. I'm sure that he's a simple preacher, but the fact is that there is an entire city backing him. Ask the people who bring news for you to count the amount of people who goes to the mosque every single Friday just so that they are there to hear him speak. Or ask him to count the number of people who go to him so he can solve their problems. There's one thing you shouldn't do. Do not think that you are a politician that knows it all. Because I know some things as well. Hmm. And from what you know, what does it tell you? How exactly should Bahaeddin Falad be dealt with? You see, I believe that there are much better ways than just killing him and create fury among all the commoners. Because today, he is actually like a warrior who is armed with different types of weapons. We have to make sure to disarm him, one by one. And I think we know. 
that there's only one person that can solve this problem. Only one. And that person is Sheikh Kamal Adin, the head judge of Khorazm. The final conclusion is, if you are in love with someone, it is because you've been drowned in the beauty. You have drowned in their grace, and the art, and the overall ability of that person. They have become more mysterious to you. So for now, you should consider every single thing that Allah has created, all the mysterious things, the beautiful and the astonishing. And then you should watch the things he has done. Witness how magnificent it is, and he'll let you in. Bravo! Bravo! Anyone who is in love, rarely loves his beloved, and is also a witness to the glory and the beauty of his beloved. Excuse me, Sheikh. Excuse me, Sheikh. I have given Hassan Bokai a house to live in and made him pay some money in advance. You know that it has been quite a while that his rent has been due and he hasn't paid me anything as of yet. I was wondering if it was possible whether or not I could take the money that he has given me in advance. Only as much as he owes you. The rest should be returned to Bokai immediately. Sure. But before doing so, I want you to tell Bokai to come and see me. I will do so, Sheikh. Open up the gates! <laughs> <laughs> 